Hello, everyone. Welcome to Office Hours with Arrow, a LinkedIn live event hosted by Arrow leaders who care about what senior living looks like. I'm your host and producer, Rachel Sheehan, and today our topic's all about joint commission accreditation. So today I have five wonderful guests with me. I'm so excited. Um, we'll do some introductions here first. So first I want to hear, um, Derek and Julie, what's kind of your role with Arrow, but then also with when it comes to joint commission? Hello, I am Derek Harris. I'm Managing Director of Wellness Integration, and my role with our Joint Commission Accreditation and Memory Care Certification has been really just kind of managing the process with the help of our uh, partner in accreditation, Achieve Accreditation. They've been instrumental in our success, but overall just working on the applications and just supporting the community through the process and working on process changes to get us up to the overall date when we're ready for survey and beyond. Hi, everybody. I'm Julie Sabo, Regional Memory Care Director, and kind of my role with this whole process is just supporting the memory care neighborhoods and getting them ready for the survey. And if we do need to change a few of our processes or add a few things, that's what I assist with. That's awesome. And we'll get in a minute to what joint commission really means. But first, I want to hear um, Cheryl, Justin and Tracy introduce yourselves as executive directors, of course. But then also, I want to know your initial reaction to when you heard um, this was going to happen, this process. So Cheryl, do you want to go first? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Walker, and I'm the executive director at the Hudson Grand. Uh, and when I was informed first that we were going to undergo the joint commission process, I was terrified. Uh, I held on to it even for a week or so, getting my own self together before I addressed it with my team. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Justin, how about you? My name is Justin Roach. I'm the executive director at Vitalia North Royalton. Um, mine was excitement. Uh, unlike Cheryl, um, I was a little later in the line of going through the accreditation process. So it was a little more streamlined. And uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to say that it was I was excited. Awesome. Tracy. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tracy Harmon. I'm the executive director at the Boulevard in Winsville. Um, for me, it was a little different um, with the background that I have with um, senior living and uh, working with the hospital as well. To me, it was just, I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. Here we go. So we were ready. That's awesome. I love the wide range of emotions. And I want to dive into what joint commission is and like, what's the purpose and why we do it. And Derek, maybe why they might have been feeling these emotions. Do you want to give a little insight to that? Absolutely. So for anyone that doesn't know, the Joint Commission is the oldest accrediting body in the United States. Um, they're also, without a doubt, probably the most well-known. I mean, you can walk into just about any hospital or almost any reputable healthcare organization, and you can count on seeing that gold seal in the entryway or somewhere throughout. So when Arrow as a company, when we were looking into quality assurance, and how do we show our families and think we're based out of Missouri, the show me state, how do we show our families, how do we show our residents, how do we show our teams that we're committed to quality? How do we wrap all this up together? That's when we realized that the Joint Commission might be the right path for us. The assisted living accreditation was new at the time and the memory care certification was even newer. It wasn't even out yet when we began the journey. So we use this as an opportunity to go down a path that really very few operators ever had gone down to be able to show that commitment to quality. And one of the things that we've really done with it is, yes, this can be a market differentiator because all three executive directors have something in common. They most likely don't have any of their neighboring assisted living communities that are also accredited in assisted living or memory care certified. It is still fairly rare in our uh, in the senior living arena. But one of the things that we're wanting to do is show, not just for us, but just operators in general, that senior living is here to stay, that we can give 
quality care to our residents and that we can give them the best quality of life possible. And this is really just opening that up for us. And as I had said, it's really not something that we want just our communities to do. I think all three executive directors would probably agree. I think they would love it if their neighbors would do this. And if more and more operators were joint commission accredited to show for the industry as a whole, that we know what we're doing and that we're creating the best quality of life. That's awesome. I love everything you touched on that. It's not just about marketing or anything. It's more about holding ourselves to a high standard. And I think that's huge. And I think all of these executive directors can agree, like that's what it was about. Even if you were scared or nervous, that's what it's about at the end of the day. So I love that. Um, I also wanna hear Julie from you about like the memory care aspect of things and how that might've been a little bit different in the survey process. Yeah, so I think what was really the most um, shocking to me is reviewing the the regulations from Joint Commission. Um, surprisingly, they weren't sh uh, like all clinical um, that you would maybe think of. Because a lot of times we think of Joint Commission, just like Tracy said, it's the hospital settings and things like that. Um, maybe areas that are a lot more clinical focused um, than, than maybe we are. But their regulations really didn't have a ton of clinical aspects to it. Of course they do, um, but I think it, it was surprisingly that a lot of our um, current things that we have in place really already started to align with what they were looking at. Um, I think what I really enjoyed the most is Joint Commission has partnered with the Alzheimer's Association. So um, they took a lot of work and, and really tapped into you know, the experts in the area to really focus in on what is the best and what is a high standard in our memory cares. Um, two of the things that I love the most about the survey process, and I, I really was blessed to have the opportunity to, to be part of many of the survey process, um, was the engagement. Like they didn't just look at the events calendars and say, okay, yep, you know, you've got six events on there, you mark that list off and you're good. They took it the, an extra step further and it was about how are your residents engaging during that engagement? Um, so that's one of the things that we look at all the time for our memory care residents because we, we wanna meet their needs. We want them to be involved. We want quality of life. So I loved how they looked at that. And then I loved also the engagement profile. So we do um, an engagement profile that really just pulls all important parts of that individual, what they like, what they don't like, what's their routine, um, who are important people in their life, what are triggers. Um, but they took it a step further and they wanted to see how we use that document into our care. So they looked at our engagement plan side by side with our service plan, and they wanted to see them overlap. They wanted to see that we are providing person-centered care. So um, I loved how, you know, the higher standards and what they're asking us to do, it, it really does benefit the residents in the long run and, and us staff too, um, when we're meeting our residents' needs in something that's familiar to them and that they want it's a lot easier to do. I love that. We also had a question come through. So before we move on, I want to throw this up here for you guys. So what has been the hardest part of starting the joint commission journey? Um, so I don't know if Derek, Julie want to answer that, but any advice from the EDs on the call also? I'd love to hear what our executive directors have to say. I guess I can start. Um, I think that the hardest thing for us was getting past the thought process that we know our state regulations. Um, and so my team would come across things like, Cheryl, we've covered that. That's that's our regulation. But no, uh, uh, you know, the accreditation goes a little bit higher than what the state regulations are, which makes us the gold star. So many, many times we had to say, it doesn't matter what the regulation is. This is the new challenge. And what do we collectively do as a team to raise the bar? Because you got to work together in this because every department connects in some way to make that regulation worth having 
the gold standard. Yeah. Yeah. Justin or Tracy, anything to add? It, it's not as scary as it sounds. It's, it's a lot of legwork, but Derek hit the nail on the head, in my opinion. We, we do have that great partnership with the Chief Accreditation, and they, they really work and go leaps and bounds to help make sure that you're prepared. And with their guidance and the hard work of the community levels, it's yes, it's, it's not as scary as it sounds. I, it, it was a fun process. Awesome. And I, of course, agree with what both of them said. I mean, in Achieve Accreditation, I mean, we had Suzanne that helped us. And it's just, you know, it's taken that one step further, like everyone has said. But she is there, has been there every step of the way to take kind of that fear away because she lets you know what step you're at. And Achieve Accreditation has made sure to let us know, like, this is what's due this month. This is what you need to work on. Here are the forms. Um, it was very streamlined. So it took a lot of the fear out of what we were doing. Yeah. And I do want to throw out this one as well. Um, what would you recommend for getting started on the process? Like who do they contact? How did this come about for us? The joint commission has actually been out and about on the conference circuit a lot. So whether it's Argentum or various sources, uh, so they're definitely making their presence more known to a lot of different people, um, even down to the state level as well at the Ohio Assisted Living Association, for example, where they were speaking on panels. Um, I, I would definitely say there's various other resources, um, even just from their website to be able to get started um, uh, as far as being able to reach out for more information. Perfect. Um, we did have a couple questions too. I know we were going to touch a little bit on this later, but first um, I'll just ask now because they're curious, but have we seen an uptick in census from becoming joint commission certified? And then also what has been the feedback from residents and families with the changes of our standards since then? Any stories there, but you know, how has it, how has it changed since we've gone through this process? I can maybe hop on the first one. Um, so we over, looking overall at our various metrics, um, one of the things, so Cheryl was one of the very first communities to become accredited at Hudson Grand. And then we've had other communities go through in small groups and we're still continuing with other groups to this day. One of the things that we've been doing is as we made changes to meet the regulate or to meet the standards for the first communities is we were changing our standards company wide so that everyone was reaching them. So ideally, by the time Justin's community became accredited and by the time Tracy's community became accredited, ideally they didn't really have to change that much because a lot of things were already in place. So it's been really great to be able to look at various trends, not just at Joint Commission accredited communities, but looking at it company wide and seeing what that could do and seeing overall census increasing over time, seeing our fall rates decreasing, average length of stay increasing, just the memory, or sorry, the uh, medication pieces has been amazing because that's been a major item for us. So partnerships like with Everspring Pharmacy, who services most of our portfolio, they've been great about helping with in-servicing our teams and getting them prepared. So we've seen a decrease in polypharmacy, a decrease in PRN or as-needed medications. And then just other things like assessment timeliness is another thing that we've been watching because that's also one of the Joint Commission's quality measures that we're staying on top of. So just ensuring assessments are on time and then the subsequent service plans that we're staying on top of those. So I, I would say if I would sum that up, the short answer is we have seen some really great changes as we've been going through the process and as we've been taking this deeper dive into quality. I think that's awesome. And as far as the executive directors, have you, how was the reaction, residents and families? Like, I know this is maybe something I know Derek said this is to keep us in standard. It's not like, oh my gosh, look at us like all the time. So how did they react? Like how how did you present it to them? If anybody has a story to share. Yeah, um, we actually, you know, we presented the, the information to the families and the residents that we are going through it so that there might be some changes and hopefully offer the positive as we were going for accreditation. Um, and then, like the, like it was mentioned earlier on, we don't push it in terms of the marketing aspect. But recently, here at North Royalton, we had a tour, and a family came in, and they and 
they touched on the joint commission piece. And it's yes, while we all meet those, those state regulatory standards, the joint commission is what helps set us apart that we go above and beyond. So that actually made the difference. And it, you know, in, in terms of that family being comfortable with making that transition of having a loved one in a senior living community. Um, so that it, it definitely plays dividends. And I will just add too, you know, I think our families and residents loved being involved and then they got to see that we were not only right doing the normal standards that we've always gone by with the regulations, but that we were bumping it up a step. And they were curious, like, what's that look like? And then, you know, when Joint Commission was here, they were comfortable, you know, meeting with them and asking questions and, and telling them how things were going. So I think it, I think it, you know, I think it improved everyone's um, state of mind and what they thought about the whole process. And again, you know, our residents and families were appreciative of the fact that, you know, we were trying even harder to be even better at what we do. I had an interesting um, conversation after the fact with one of our vendors um, who was uh, who does uh, advertising and who does recruitment for skilled nursing needs. Um, and when I shared with her that we were joint commission certified, she said, Cheryl, assisted livings aren't joint commission certified. I'm not sure, you know, what what maybe you're talking about. I said, no, 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 we are. It's really true. We are. And so I showed her the letter and I showed her everything. And she said, I don't think people know that assisted livings are now joining this arena. I said, well, we are in, we are in. Um, and I think the other part of it with my, with our family members is we did this sort of out just, just coming out of COVID. It was, we, we did it in 2022 and there was so much press about nursing homes and care communities and what kind of care is it? And are they, you know, is it, are they valuable? And, you know, is it the right thing? And when my family members heard that we were going to raise the standard and set a new standard and earn that and maintain that, it set a whole different precedence for how eager the family members were to help us, how eager the family, the family members were to tell the residents, this is what's, you know, their loved ones, this is what was going on. And so it changed the energy across the board. I think that's incredible. Like all of you kind of touched on having the families and residents know this was happening. And I think it could be easy to just like, oh, these people come in and survey us and like not even involve um, or really explain what's going on. So I think that's incredible communication from all of you. And I just love it. Um, so I do want to dive in a little bit, um, Cheryl. You had a special circumstance because you had two separate surveys. So I want you to talk a little bit about that. You Yours was at a time where you had to do assisted living and memory care separate, um, where you freaked out both times. You know, how did it go? What was it like? Freaked out the first time. <laughs> the second time it was like, nope, we've got this. We have this. Because even though um, our, our memory care, the first survey time was not being surveyed for the joint commission. Our surveyor was still in our memory care quite a bit, making certain that the quality of standard for care overall was happening, that the standard of programming overall was happening. So she was in and out of there quite a bit as well. So it, it benefited us so the second time, because it was probably really close to a year to the day almost that um, we were credited. And then a year later, we were doing the memory care one. Um, but it was, the, you know, we had to start, start the same process again. But I think as a team, we had bonded the first time around and it made all the difference in the world. So not near as scary. Yeah. So as one of the first in the nation, I have to throw that out there. Um, what was it like to exceed those requirements? It, it was really exciting. I have to say, when when we found, when we got the accreditation, it, it came in my email, and I whirled all around the community, and I've got the letter, and I'm go, I'm just, you know, we're all hugging and high fiving and carrying on. We tell the residents, and and we had a celebration um, at our ha at a happy hour um, with, with the families and the residents, and it was just the excitement was really, really uh, more than palatable. Everybody felt like they all played a part. So it was a community of celebration, which was so fantastic. Oh, 
Incredible. Yeah. I should have flew to Ohio for that. Right. That's such right. Fun. <laughs> I love it. I did. Um, there was another question that came through. I think Derek, you might be able to answer this one. Um, but as a medical provider for many of the communities, are there other things you have to do with our credentialing? Well, hello, Greg. <laughs> so, uh, Greg is from Preferred Podiatry. They service pretty much almost our entire portfolio as our podiatry provider. And yeah, actually, that was something that we did have to go through that we had never experienced before. Uh, I mean, not to say that we never had any kind of credentialing in place at all. Uh, but, I mean, we would do some due diligence to make sure that the provider has a you know, their licenses in good standing. But I can honestly say we didn't really have the best procedures to make sure that they were oriented to our communities and oriented to a, any uh, scope of practice standards within us. So, say, like podiatry, we may not want anything that could be considered surgical going on in our communities and things like that. So that was something that was entirely new to us, was this concept of having a formal credentialing process. So once again, verifying the license is in good standing, ensuring that the providers know the expectations within our communities. So yes, that has been something that was really great. And that's actually a perfect example because we were able to adapt certain processes that were already in place by making small tweaks to be able to meet the Joint Commission standards. But that was one example where we did have to go from scratch and create a standard. So, um, and that's something that I'm definitely very proud that we have in place to this day. So thank you for that question. That was a great one. Awesome, and you answered it perfectly. Um, okay, moving on to justice. So yours was different than Cheryl's in the fact that yours happened together, AL and memory care. So. What was that like? How did your team come together in this? It, it was actually great to watch. Um, it, it, it gave them that understanding of how every department plays a position in the Joint Commission and understanding like the, the lengths and the bounds that each one has to go to to ensure compliance. Um, so it, it actually brought the team together. Uh, and then on top of that, being able to make it a competition with, with a, a local community going through it at the same time of us. So uh, sorry, John, um, but it, it, it's, it, it, was, it was the glue. Um, it, a lot of leg work, but it, it was more so assisted living first and then we dug into memory care. But it was essentially, like Julie said, digging into the engagement matches, the engagement that you're reading on the service plans matches the engagement that the residents are partaking in. That's awesome. And your community is also um, the current leader in terms of quantity recommendations. So why is that? What does that mean? It's the recommendations that you get from the Joint Commission. It's just, are you already meeting their standards when they're coming in for their survey? So yes, I am very proud to say that. The the team, we we busted our tail to, to achieve that. Um, and I, I set that goal for them. Let's set the Let's set the standard within the company, and then we could go out and celebrate it. So once we achieve that, like, like Cheryl said, it probably wasn't a pretty sight, but I'm running through the hallways, letting them know that we did it. So it was, it was definitely fun. That's awesome. I love all of you talking about this because I feel like you're just lifting the energy um, here on this call, but also like in your communities, which is incredible. Um, Tracy, for you, your experience was unique when it comes to that camaraderie and engagement. Tell me more about that and everything you went through. Well, we did a party. So we started off, um, we did a whole kickoff party and, and it was a setting sail. And so uh, we involved the families, the residents, the staff, um, and uh, achieve accreditation, even brought in some of the decorations. Um, and we, you know, again, did a party. We, we try to make everything as fun as possible here. And then when we involved everybody, again, it's like everyone says, you know, this is a team approach. You cannot get accredited without the entire team. It takes every department. It takes uh, the residents and the families having faith in what you're doing, and they participate as well. Um, and and you just go and you we tag team off each other. Like everything isn't just on you know Stacy, the wellness director, and everything is not on Jackie and culinary. We have to work together as a team to make the whole process work. And I think. 
I think it was a big help for us. You know, we joke a lot. We try to make light of situations when we get stressed. That's what we do here. We kind of clown around and joke, but it, it brings us together more as a team. And again, having the residents involved, you know, some of them even went around and were like, oh, I see this. Is this point part of joint commission? Should we work on this? And it was cute because, yeah, they wanted everybody was playing a part. And again, it's the teamwork and that's how you do it. And, you know, again, like Justin said, we're all very competitive. So in Missouri, you know, we wanted to be the first memory care. So because of timing, I'm going to say this again, Derek, because of timing, someone else beat us. But anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> I love it. I think all of you have kind of touched on that. Like you just keep throwing back to teamwork and what a great team you have. And that just shows so much of what a great leader you are for your communities. So I want you to realize this is a big deal. You're a big deal. If you read these comments later, everyone is shouting you out in the comments and um, you guys do an incredible job. So thank you for sharing all of that. Um, I know we touched a little bit on this, like how things have changed since the survey um, and the accreditation, but Derek, do you want to touch on our, specifically like our policies? How have our policies changed as a result of this? Sure. One of the big items was, as I had mentioned before, we wanted to make sure that as we adapted to be able to meet the standards, especially early in the process, we wanted to make those changes company-wide. So in this pursuit of quality, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have our accredited communities operating to this level and then non-accredited communities operating to this level. So that was really important to us to be able to bring all that together. Um, and as I had mentioned, with overall metrics, as we're seeing improvement across the board, I think that's been really rewarding. And, you know, while we may not be able to say 100 percent without a doubt that's because of Joint Commission accreditation, I could definitely say that the overall attention to quality and the overall attention to process and Im process improvement has really done well for us. So it's been incredible to see what these communities have been able to do. And I really think that they are bettering the senior living industry as a whole by going through what they have done. I also thought of a question myself that I don't know the answer, but how does like does this is this something that we have to go through every year? Um, like, do we get renewal? Like, how does that work? So the way it works is we have our initial survey and then you are surveyed triannually after that. So okay. every three years there is a survey unless if for whatever reason there's an interim survey. So perhaps for a resident or family concern, various reasons, you could see a survey in the interim. How do how do we know that we're maintaining the standards in the interim, though? I kind of touched on this before, but there's five key quality measures that we're reporting on quarterly to the Joint Commission. These are things like our staffing turnover, for example, fall rates, et cetera. So these are things that the Joint Commission has identified as five of the top items that will show whether or not our communities are operating to optimal quality. So the Joint Commission also monitors those as we're reporting those metrics quarterly and if needed, they would intervene, whether that be remotely or with an on-site survey, just to ensure that we are still worthy of that gold seal. Awesome. Well, thanks for answering my question. Um, last one I have for all of you to answer, um, the executive directors. We heard how you felt in the beginning. So now I want to know full circle, how did it feel um, when you found out the good news that you were accredited? It was really uh, a moment for us to stand back, take a deep breath and say, look what we did. As a team, as a community, as staff, family, residents, what we accomplished, we, when you, we, we, we shot the trajectory to go, we, this, is, this is the goal, here's where we need to be. And when we got there, standing in the winner circle is kind of what, how we described it, like we're in the winner circle, it was, absolutely wonderful. The same, um, knowing that we we exceeded and achieved the goal that we set forth as a team, that once, once the surveyor left, we were able to just take a step back and reflect and see how much hard work put into it and how it was all worth it. Um, yes, it's stressful at times, but at the end of the day, 
getting accredited was all that mattered. And we accomplished that as, as a community and as a family. And then I will say same as well. I mean, you, you get done with this process and you look at each other and you're like, okay, if we can do this and if we can meet these goals, we can do anything together. And so the team here, you know, between the team on the ground on site and then the aero team as a whole with everyone that comes in and helps and, and has your back as well. I mean, it's just a good feeling at the end of the day, you're done and you're like, okay, again, we can do anything. We've done this and we, and we rocked it. You did rock it. I'm so excited. This was a great topic. I loved having you all here. Um, I think we did it. I think um, this has just been so great. And next week, we will have our plant operations team. So definitely tune in for that. But you all are just wonderful. I'm so excited to see where this takes us. And just thank you so much for being here. So that's all. Bye, everybody.